Dear friends, now we are going to solve the different numerical on carburetor dimensions. As in the last few videos, we discussed about a very important derivations of carburetor that is the exact analysis method and the approximate analysis method of the carburetor. As we have discussed the different derivation part with the help of the different equations. Now we are going to utilize this particular equation to solve the different numericals to get the different dimensions of the carburetor. So before going to start to understand the numerical part of the carburetor dimension, we must have to understand one more concept and that is nothing but called as the altitude compensation. Okay. So altitude compensation means what? So altitude compensation is totally related to the height. Okay. So the everywhere, if we want to measure the altitude, that time the sea level is a reference. Okay. So carburetor can be used for the different vehicles, generally for the two wheeler, as I said earlier. So if you can take the example. Suppose we are using the carburetor in the condition where hot, what we can say, the temperature is very high. Sometimes we can use the carburetor where the temperature is very cold one. Sometimes we can use the carburetor where some different environmental conditions will be there. So the main characteristics of the conventional float type carburetor is to meter the air and fuel by volume and not by the weight as the basis of calculating combustible air fuel ratio. So we know this is the major task of every carburetor to supply the required amount of air and fuel mixture by volume and not by the weight. Okay, so the weight of one meter cube of air decreases as altitude increases. So dear friends, this statement is again very important. The weight of one meter cube of air decreases as altitude increases. Means as we go up from the sea surface, the weight of one meter cube of air can decrease. Okay. So most of the automobile carburetors are calibrated at altitudes near the sea level. This is again very important. Many of times the different uh, automobiles carburetor can calibrate according to the altitudes which is near to the sea level. So when the atmospheric conditions are different from those, the carburetor was calibrated. The air fuel ratio changes. So this is again very, very important. So if the condition will be different one as I told you earlier, so there should be a requirement or there should be Calibration is required for each and every carburetor and there will be a changes in the air fuel ratio of the carburetor. If the vehicle is operated at an altitude lower than the calibrated altitude, the lean mixture is obtained, which results in poor drivability. This is again very important. Okay. If the vehicle is operated at an altitude higher than the calibrated altitude, the rich mixture is obtained, which results in in complete combustion and emits hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide. Okay, so these are the two reasons. With the help of this, we can understand if the vehicle is operated at an altitude lower than the calibrated altitude. Means suppose X Y Z calibration altitude for that particular carburetor is there, and we are using that particular vehicle. We are operating that vehicle where the altitude is lower than the calibrated altitude. Then whatever mixture which will come from the carburetor that will be lean mixture, okay, and which results in poor drivability. And similarly, in the another condition, when the vehicle is operated where the altitude is higher than the calibrated altitude, that time the more rich mixture will come out from the engine from the carburetor. So it results in complete combustion and emits hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide. So that the altitude compensation is very, very important and according to the altitude, different carburetors can design its calibration been done. That is again very important. So if 
E plus 1 is equal to under root of rho suffix O divided by rho is again equal to under root of P suffix O into T divided by P into T suffix O. So what about this one? So each and every term here we are going to discuss, we are going to understand. So this E is nothing but the enrichment. Capital E stands for the enrichment due to variation of the air density closely follows the above relationship where the subscript O refers to the calibration condition. So here is subscript O, here is subscript O, here is also subscript O. This subscript O is refers to the calibration condition and this is one of the relation which is generally required for the calculations of altitude compensation during the calibration of the carburetor. So this E stands for the enrichment. Okay. So the relationships where subscript O refers to the calibration condition, thus if the density ratio is 0.84, suppose here in that particular density, if the density ratio is 0.84, then the enrichment E is given by that time the enrichment E is given by then this will be the relation E plus 1 is equal to under root of 1 divided by 0.84 and this value will come becomes 1.091. Okay. Again, if you calculate the E only, then we can write E is equal to 0 0.091 and in terms of percentage, the enrichment is 9.1%. Likewise, we can calculate with the help of this particular enrichment relation. So similarly, when we see about this particular graph, here we have the graph of air fuel ratio versus the air. On the y axis here we have air in, uh, on the x axis here we have air in kg per minute. And as well as on the y axis here we have the different air fuel ratio. The air fuel ratio ranges from 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. Whereas the air in kg per minute that is 0 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So what is this particular different curve indicated? So here we have the different curve, few dotted lines are there, few thick lines are there. So these are different lines or the different curve indicates the altitude, the altitude in MM. So generally altitude is totally referred to the height from the sea level. So suppose this line indicate 200 mm altitude that time this much amount of air fuel ratio which is present over here. Okay. Suppose uh, this first line indicate the altitude is 200 that time uh, this is nothing but the air amount that is in kg per minute and similarly for this particular point this 12 uh, is required air fuel ratio likewise that. Similarly for this one the altitude is 1400 and for this one that is altitude is 2500 and this inner one that is the altitude is 3300 and accordingly the different air fuel ratios on the y axis and uh, the air uh, in kg per minute on the x axis. Okay so likewise uh, we can read this particular graph. So similarly the E that is the enrichment shows the uh, charge over the basic calibrated air fuel ratio in an uncompensated figure shows as we just discussed the flow characteristics of a typical carburetor of various altitude level. So this is something about the uh, altitude compensation which is again very very much essential and required when we are going to design the carburetor for different altitudes. So always uh, remember dear friend the calibration is essential and required in the case of carburetor when we will use that particular carburetor for the different conditions according to the altitude compensation according to the level uh, or the height from the sea level itself. Okay, so this is something about the altitude compensation. So after this one the next one that uh, we are going to start to see the actual numerical things or the problem number one. So this is the initial problem. Again, this is very important problem of the carburetor. Uh, in this particular carburetor, finally we have to calculate the dimensions of the carburetor. So first of all, I'm going to read the statement. What the statement is given? A simple jet carburetor is required to supply a 5 kg of air and 0.5 kg of fuel per minute. 
The specific gravity of fuel is 0.75. The air is initially at 1.0 bar, comma 300 Kelvin. Calculate the throat diameter of choke tube for a flow velocity of 100 meter per second with velocity coefficient of 0.8. If the pressure drop across the fuel metering orifice is 0.8 of that of choke, calculate the orifice diameter by taking C suffix DF is equal to 0.6 and gamma is equal to 1.4. Okay. So, dear friends, whenever we are going to solve any kind of a numericals or problem, that time you have to read the problem statement thoroughly. Unless and until understanding the problem statements, we can't solve the problem. That's why the given data is again very necessary, which we can get from the problem statement. So, what is given in this particular problem? The different things are given in the problem. So, there is one simple jet carburetor which is required to supply a 5 kg of air. So, means in this case 5 kg of air that is. So, one by one we will understand the given data. So, first one mass of air that is a 5 kg. Let us consider M suffix A is a mass of air that is given 5 kg. Okay. So, the next one 0.5 kg that is a mass of fuel per minute. Okay, these things are for per minute 5 kg of air per minute and 0.5 kg of fuel per minute. Means this 5 kg is a mass of fuel and 0.5 kg is a uh, mass of air is a 5 kg and mass of fuel is a 0.5 kg. Okay, the specific gravity of fuel is 0.75. So, in this case, the density of fuel is not directly given. But instead of that, the specific gravity is given and that is 0.75. The initial air pressure is 1 bar. Okay. The air is initially at 1 bar and 300 degree Kelvin. So, this is the initial temperature and the initial pressure of the air. Calculate the throat diameter of choke tube for a flow velocity of 100 meter per second. So, in this case, what we have to calculate? We have to calculate the throat diameter. So, if you remember that particular diagram of simple carburetor, the throat diameter which is present at the venturi throat. Okay. So, in this case, we have to calculate the throat diameter of the choke tube where the flow velocity of 100 meter per second. Okay. Means that, that choke tube flow velocity of air is 100 meter per second. Again, with the velocity coefficient of 0.8. If the pressure drop across the fuel uh, metering orifice is 0.8 of that choke. And again, we have to calculate the orifice diameter by taking CDF is nothing but coefficient of discharge of fuel that value is given 0.6 and adiabatic index that is nothing but gamma which value is given 1.4. So again, here we can write uh, as a given data one by one. So initially we start with the first one that is the mass of air is equal to 5 kg per minute which is given in the problem. So, mass of fuel is again uh, given in the problem that is uh, m suffix f 0.5 kg. Then the precipic gravity of fuel is equal to 0.75. So, as I told you earlier here the specific gravity is given that's why we have to calculate the density fuel density. So, here we have the formula to calculate the fuel density that is specific gravity multiplied by 1000 that is a density of standard fuel. Okay, so this will come 750 kg per meter cube. Then the initial air pressure that is to be considered P1 is equal to 1 bar. Here we can consider then initial temperature of air is uh, let us consider 300 Kelvin or we can consider T1. Then the flow velocity. So the flow velocity at throat. So as we know as we have the diagram of simple carburetor the throat section is nothing but there are two, two sections. Again, here we require the knowledge of uh, uh, the derivation. According to the derivation, we can solve this problem. So, the flow velocity at the throat section that is C2 is equal to 100 meter per second. Then, similarly, the velocity coefficient, let us consider V suffix S is equal to 0 0.8. This is the velocity coefficient. Then, the pressure drop across the orifice is given that is 0 0.8. 
then the coefficient of discharge of fuel that is nothing but c suffix df is equal to 0.6 and similarly gamma is nothing but adiabatic index is equal to 1.4 so this is something about the given data and with the help of this given data we have to get the two unknown one unknown is uh, the orifice diameter df and the another unknown which we have to calculate that is the diameter of fuel throat means we can say that the charge jet diameter itself okay so with the help of that given data initially we must have to identify uh, by which method we can solve this particular problem so as we have the two derivation one is uh, by neglecting the effect of compressivity of air and the another derivation that is by taking the effect of compressivity of air so you must have to identify first by which method we can solve this particular problem so how we can identify so initially wherever initially wherever the temperature is given in the problem initial uh, pressure is given in the problem so the things if the temperature and pressure is given in the problem that time you have to use this formula this formula is nothing but the yes if you if you understood that particular derivation part then easily you can understand which kind of uh, derivation we are going to use so this is the derivation by taking the effect of compressibility of air. So we already understood, we already discussed how we can get this particular equation. Okay, so from that derivation itself by taking the effect of compressibility of air, here we have the equation of C2. C2 is nothing but, that is nothing but the flow velocity at the throat section itself. So we have C2 is equal to, the formula is under root of, 2 into Cp into T1 in bracket 1 minus P2 by P1 raised to gamma minus 1 divided by gamma bracket close. And here is velocity coefficient is given. That's why this whole term is multiplied by V suffix C. If it is not given in the problem, then there is no need to write this particular thing over here. Okay. So sometimes the standard value of C suffix Cp cp is nothing but specific heat at constant pressure the standard value is 1005 joule per kg kelvin sometime it is given in the problem it is if it is not given in the problem then we can consider as the standard value of specific heat at constant pressure is equal to 1005 joule per kg kelvin so units are very very important if you observe everywhere i have written the unit Okay, if you miss to write the unit, definitely you will lose the mark in your examination. So again, put all the values, whatever uh, things we uh, discussed in this particular uh, derivation part, in this particular given data. Uh, according to the derivation part, we have to take that particular formula of C2 and put all this given data in that particular formula and we can write or we can get the value of P2. So in this case, uh, when we are going to fill all these particular values, the unknown is a P2 because P1 is given, gamma is given, T1 is given, Cp is given, Vc is given and C2 value is given. So all the values are given in the problem, only P2 is unknown. So with the help of this formula, we can calculate P2 and that will come 0.91 bar. Please check at your home. Please calculate yourself, put all the values and get the answers. P2 is equal to 0.91 bar. So similarly, the next step to solve such kind of a problem is what? As we know, the P1, V1 is equal to MRT1. So again, here we have to use the, uh, the standard equations. So similarly, uh, as we simplify the equation and the value of R is equal to 0.91. 287 kilojoule per kg kelvin this is the uh, standard value of universal gas constant in terms of kilojoule per kg kelvin so again we can just rearrange the terms v1 is equal to this rt1 divided by p1 just take down this p1 to the right side and m is equal to unit mass and that is equal to 1 so when I'm going to write the units, okay, unit conversion is again very important. So to understand the unit conversions, I have written the units. So volume is always in meter cube per kg. So universal gas constant unit is as we just written kilojoule per kg Kelvin. So kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Temperature is given in Kelvin and the pressure, the unit of pressure is Newton per meter square. Okay, so here is that 
divide thing so if we can take down over here so we can write newton per meter square like this so in this case pressure in bar and uh, when we are going to convert the pressure to bar that will come to newton per meter square 10 raised to 5 newton per meter square multiply by 10 raised to 5 so just take down over here newton per meter square uh, afterwards so we'll take that 10 raised to 5 for the further calculation so similarly kilojoule per kg as it is this kelvin and this kelvin will get cancelled to each other okay so this kelvin and this kelvin will get cancelled to each other so what is remaining kilojoule per kg multiply by this newton per meter square so if we write uh, this one meter square per newton because this term p1 is over here and that is nothing but newton here i am just writing some correction i am doing over here newton per meter square so this term is like this one only so once it will come to the numerator that time this term should become meter square divided by newton okay so instead of this uh, newton per meter square this term will be meter square like this one divided by newton so just i am uh, rearranging the term okay so here is the meter square per newton so similarly this joule is nothing but newton meter okay joule is nothing but newton meter so i have replaced joule to newton meter so we have kilo newton meter divided by kilogram or kg multiply by this meter square newton as it is so the next thing is what in this case this kilo newton into meter into meter square that comes meter cube divided by kg and this newton in this case this and this will get cancelled to each other so what is remaining this kilo then this meter square into meter that is meter cube per kg so this term is again very important and that is nothing but called as a kilo one kilo is nothing but 1000 gram so in this case there is a requirement to multiply by 1000 okay so similarly when we calculate the v1 again we are going to calculate v1 v1 as it is the value of r is 0.287 which is given over here so please write down that value 0.287 multiply by 300 that is the initial temperature in kelvin divided by 10 raised to 5 because we have converted that bar into newton per meter square as we discussed earlier here we have taken that 10 raised to 5 so to this particular term rt1 by p1 here is to multiplied by 1000 why there is a need to multiply by 1000 the reason is what this particular k because of k as we discuss the unit conversion there is a need to multiply by 1000 so after calculations we will get the v1 value is equal to 0 0.861 meter cube per kg so again this is very important so after this one the next one the next step to solve the problem we know that p1 v1 raised to gamma is equal to p2 v2 raised to gamma so if you observe two steps or the way to solve this particular problem we are just following the different things we did in the derivation part okay that's it nothing we are doing away from that particular derivation so similarly we have p1 v1 raised to gamma is equal to p2 v2 raised to gamma so with the help of this equation as we have the value of p1 with us v1 with us gamma with us p2 with us then we can automatically calculate v2 value so we have the value of calculated value of v2 is 0 0.92 meter cube per kg so again uh, we have just calculated v1 and then v2 one by one we are getting the different values after that the next step is what now to calculate the throat diameter so we have to calculate the throat diameter of that particular choke tube so before that we must have to calculate the that particular area of the throat 
so how we can calculate the area of throat so to calculate the area of throat we have the formula mass of air is equal to a2 c2 divided by u2 and we already discussed this formula in the derivation part so we have the different values c2 v2 mass of air so put all the values in this equation and get the uh, easily we can get the value of a2 that is the area 7.67 into 10 to minus 4 meter square please do your own calculations and check down all these answers whether you are getting the correct answers or wrong so similarly in terms of centimeter square here we have 7.67 centimeter square is the a2 so area is nothing but pi by 42 square so with the help of this formula we can get finally the value of d2 that is the diameter of choke tube and the throat section is equal to 3.13 centimeter this is one of the final answer and this is the first unknown similarly now we are going to calculate the second unknown to get the second unknown next steps are now for calculating the orifice diameter we know that delta pa that is nothing but change in pressure of air so p1 minus p2 change in pressure of air means what initial pressure minus that final pressure p1 minus p2 so the initial pressure as uh, it is given in the problem is equal to 1 and the final pressure which it is given in the problem that is 0 0.912 bar as we have calculated so put that value then so we got uh, this particular change in pressure of air is 0 0.088 bar so similarly as there will be a change in pressure of air so similarly there will be a change in pressure of the fuel also so this is the standard formula to calculate the change in pressure of fuel the formula is pressure drop into change in pressure of air so pressure drop is uh, already given in the problem and that is 0 0.8 and delta p as we just calculate so put that value over here so finally we got the value of delta p of is equal to 0 0.0704 bar so after getting the value of delta p of, finally we are going to use the final equation and that is the equation of mass of fail okay so in this case by taking the effect of compressibility of air we have the equation of mass of fuel that is af that is the area of fuel or if it's then cdf that is the coefficient of discharge of fuel under root of 2 rho f in bracket delta p f minus z into z into rho f so in this case the uh, height is not given nothing is mentioned for the z that's why we are going to consider z value is become zero as it is not given in the problem so put uh, or consider the value of z become zero and because of this uh, z term is zero the further terms will be again zero so the remaining term is only 2 rho f into delta p f as it is so put all the values in this equation and uh, mass of fuel is given for minute basis to convert it by divided by 60 so finally we get the a of that is area of that particular fuel orifice is equal to 0 0.0427 centimeter square and again from the area we can calculate the diameter that is pi by 4 df square that is equal to 0 0.23 centimeter so this is our final answer so in this problem we have calculated the diameter of fuel orifice that is 0 0.23 centimeter and again uh, we have calculated that is a throat diameter d2 that is 3.13 centimeter so hope you understood this particular problem in well manner so Thanks a lot.